hi welcome to my channel how you are doing hope you all are doing fine you all are doing all right if it's your first time here you are welcome what i do on this platform i react to different kinds of videos politics to be precise from africa and other parts of the world so if you are interested in such content do not forget to subscribe before leaving this very platform and for my returning subscribers you guys are awesome i appreciate you thanks for your support before we go further in this video today let me put out a disclaimer out there on this channel we don't promote violence we don't promote tension we only react to political videos out there guys let's watch the video together and at the ending part i'll be back with the rest of my thoughts in this very video thank you across board in the country many have criticized the number of ministries being created by the government the introduction of these ministries an appointment of over 40 ministers by president bola tinubu has brought about the conversation on the high cost of governance the question now is with the current economic crisis nigeria is facing is this the right time to appoint this number of ministers joining us to discuss the bloated federal cabinet and its impact on the economy is Paul Alaji, senior economist and partner, SPM professionals. Good morning, Paul. Welcome to the morning show, and it's always good to have you. Good morning, and thank you so very much for having me. All right, thank you indeed. All right, uh, let's uh, hit the, the topic. You know, it's, uh, it, I mean, conversation is growing yet again, uh, given that three additional ministers uh, have been um, confirmed by the Senate, uh, which of course now brings the total number of ministers uh, for President Bola Metinubu to 48. Uh, he wanted the 48 have been issued, but you know that three ministers were dropped. And that conversation started at that time, uh, that not only uh, will 48 be the biggest number uh, ever in Nigeria, uh, and that, but that it will also distort the what the constitution actually says uh, one per state and then at the discretion of the president and one per uh, uh, six of the geopolitical zones but here we are 48 ministers uh, at a time uh, that nigeria is struggling at a time that four months uh, after president tinubu took over uh, cost of living has skyrocketed uh, what do you make of these three additional ministers and the total 48, uh, you know, number in total, uh, do you see any sense, do you get any sense uh, that there will be prudence and that the, the government or the president is listening to the complaints by Nigerians? Well, I, I must thank you once again for inviting me to speak uh, on the show this morning. I, I must say that 48th minister is the largest we have seen at a time where we are going through the lowest in our economy. Inflation is among the highest, I think, apart from the civil war. Uh, inflation right now is about 25.8% year on year, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Unemployment, when you use 20 hours a week or 40 hours a week, it's also among the largest. So government have options in creating environment or in breaking down the ministry, which is what we have seen before now, Ministry of Transport uh, used to include what we now call the blue economy that has just been divided. So there are two sides to this. From what government side is saying, we have tried to create oil away from gas so that we can better manage uh, these two uh, com I mean, commission and government can now make more money uh, from having from dividing them where the government is also saying that dividing uh, transport which predominantly now is railways and a few other things is separating it from the blue, blue ocean economy and by the way blue ocean economy have a potential of generating an average of 15 to 20 trillion naira revenue to the federation accounts and from that federal government can make a lot so government is making the argument that we are sharing these into two so that we can better effectively manage 
uh, these agencies, among others. And we have also seen that Kaduna State, with the, the thing that played out with, of course, the former governor of Kaduna State, now we have seen the, uh, a, a former senator replacing that slot. So here is it. 36 is what the Constitution said. Uh, the, another six may be based on the, uh, the interest of the president, his discretion, to bring. But you know, lawyers have also argued one way or the other that the, the, the constitution is not really clear as to what is to be done. So that is the argument on the government side. But on the people side, the, the people seems to have another argument because this is the time we should be looking at reducing our costs significantly. Government will gain additional six to eight trillion naira because of two policies of flotation and removal of subsidy. But all those money will be coming directly from the pocket of people because subsidy has been removed, because estate debt is worse off. So living standard will be tough for many Nigerians or anybody living in Nigeria right now. So life will be very, very tough. So the question is, if government is saying, go and buy a long belt and tighten the belts, make sure that it is really very tight, but government seems to have thrown away a belt by making the government size to be bloated, to increase, and so on and so forth. So all of this we have implication. First on government, because people will start to doubt if government is really sincere as to the interest uh, of their personal economy if government really wants to make people to become more prosperous. So you can see the argument of government by saying, we're actually for your interest because we want to better manage the ministries. That is why we are dividing them. But people are wondering, even the money you have now, why don't you reduce the number? So, but this is my position. Competitiveness of this ministry. How much in revenue can we generate from this ministry? How much in terms of creation of a positive environment can we have? If we don't, if it is business as usual, I can tell you that rather than lifting people out of poverty, people will suffer more. And money will go more into the pocket of politicians. That is if we don't create an effective structure that government has paid the argument on. Already people are paying because people are paying more virtually for everything. That is why people feel, well, instead of you continue to get more persons to manage ministry and parastatus that is not able to give a substantial amount to this economy, and we have also seen the slow process that we have witnessed, especially with the Federal Civil Service. We think that it's better you reduce the number of cabinet size you have so that we can put the money directly in the economy for its growth. Okay, uh, Paul, good to see you as always. Um, I would like to touch base with you on something extremely important, which is the specific ministries that are supposed to be designed to ensure that we will make money out of this government and will help to grow the economy. Uh, you look at a Ministry of Marine and um, Blue Economy. That particular ministry, like you said, is going to help to generate. How does a ministry like that generate, considering the fact that we all know that ministries don't really make money. They don't raise revenue for the country by making profit. They're not profit-making organization. How does it help? The truth is that that ministry, if well managed, I can tell you that we can generate a lot. Let me also reveal that the PMS we pay so much for I don't think we should, even with the removal of subsidy, with the flotation of exchange rate, if the, we restructure our port system, one, turnaround time would improve, money generated by the MASA, among other agencies, will significantly improve. And you know, most of this money are actually paid in hard currency. They are paid in US dollars. So if we can manage it, our attention of government is squarely on the ministry, Nigeria will make a lot more than we are doing today. I also think if you go to the ministry as of now, there are no automation. It is still crude. It is still done the, the traditional way. So if government will improve by bringing up an automation system to that ministry, what we generate in revenue in actual terms will, of course, be very evident. So there are so many things, so many sub-departments within that ministry uh, that I think that 
the new minister and his team, we need to really pay critical attention on. Because what is lost in that ministry that is not generated, that could have been gotten to government, is not less than 7 trillion naira. That is what is lost. And if you put that to what the ministry is generating right now, you know that we need to play our game differently. From the Nigerian Port Authority to NIMASA to many other critical agencies of government that are directly involved uh, with the ministry, Nigeria just needs to do business differently. Because the communication, the manner of, of work, you know, efficiency, based on several research, and I'm talking of research that has been conducted through participant observation, I'm referring to research that has been conducted even by those in academics, I can tell you from the two. We all agree that Nigeria uh, blue ocean economy or marine uh, is not properly managed. It is not properly presented. And I think that government should do something quickly about it instead of putting so much pressure on Nigeria. Because if you do 7 trillion naira more in revenue to government, Coming from that ministry alone, then I can tell you Nigeria starts a better position in terms of expenditure to put more infrastructure in place to make the economy better. And these are just monies by rearranging the port, by looking at new windows, by harmonizing some decisions, which of course is not being taken today. Okay, so Paul, um, I can understand the issue of uh, the ports. There is definitely going to be money that will be made if we can just optimize the services of the uh, Ports Authority, Nigeria Ports Authority, if we can optimize it, we'll make money, definitely, no doubt about it. But apart from the ports, when we say marine and blue economy, we're talking about the seas, and we're talking about the deep seas, and we're talking about opportunity for fishery and fishing within outside of our shores, which is far deep into the sea, but still within the territorial area of Nigeria. But that one help me understand and a number of nigerians are asking the question which agencies of government will be working within this ministry to make sure that we activate that which is the enablement for the private sector to dip into it and to be able to get something out of it and then we make money from tax well, I have a whole document. Luckily, I, I have it here with me. I'll just mention a few things that I think we can do that is, of course, research-based. Port tariff and deals, uh, what we are charging currently, I think it, we need to do a few things about it. Some needs to be reviewed, uh, but I wouldn't say whether it is upward or downward so that I don't mislead uh, people. Then, consum and desert duty at the port. Uh, we also have licenses and permits. We have marine services. We have offshore oil and uh, gas exploration. I'm just giving you bullet point. Uh, as we speak, can we even build our own ship? And it may not be that large. Then, the arrangement of Port Authority, we have marine transportation, we have, you know, fishery, as, as, as you mentioned, and so many other things. And one of the things that is key to making this revenue happen is, number one, the act review. We need to review the acts, and we also need to make new policies. Because this is a very... Uh, important strategic and technical area of our economic life that I think we need to uh, do something about. I also want to advise the incumbent administration and the sitting minister to please conduct an audit. It's very important to conduct an audit on the port and also all the agencies of government. And I'm sure many of many people will thank me later if this audit is uh, conducted. So there are quite a number of things from what I've mentioned and a, a whole lot here. These documents can also be made available to those in authority at no cost so that they can look at it and also improve uh, the revenues that is coming to Nigeria uh, from, the, from our port. I also must say that we need to do something very quickly by making other ports very active because this will really help us in, uh, in, in, in I mean, this will really help our economy in making more money available to Nigeria and also activating more economic life. Because you see, the blue, the, the blue economy has a potential of activating even other economy that is not within the blue area or within the system. So I am very, I'm, I, I will remain hopeful that authority will do the needful. Now that government have decided to separate the ministry, of course it's going to cost the Nigerian state more because we are going to have brand new ministers, we are going to have special advisors, we are going to have all manner of new things, which of course will cost more than, and it's the reason why we are having this conversation this morning. But in returns, 
what are we going to get? Are we going to double what we are getting from the old Ministry of Transport? Now that is just uh, going to be railway and a few other things. But for the Ministry of Marine and uh, Blue Ocean, I mean, Blue Economy, can we double or triple what the expectation is? And I can tell you from research, this is possible and we can do as much as seven trillion naira on the list. All right, fantastic. Uh, I did ask a question earlier, uh, Paul, about uh, if you got the sense uh, that um, uh, this government with this large size of the cabinet uh, will be prudent. Uh, I would like you to, um, you know, uh, tailor your answer to uh, the, 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 the second part of the question, which is when we say that maybe the interest of the, of the president is to ensure that um, uh, certain ministers uh, properly oversee a certain department. Uh, w wouldn't that be considered as a Nigerian thing? And which would be surprising given the fact that at least it's been confirmed that our president, uh, you know, of course, studied abroad. He's a Chicago boy, like many, you know, uh, of his cabinet members who also, you know, studied abroad. But in the U.S., where the president has studied, only 15 secretaries, as you are aware, you know, are there with 10 others in cabinet plus the vice president. I'll give you a quick rundown of the other uh, world economies. UK, you know, has only 22 uh, secretaries as, as, as we know them to be. Uh, Canada has 39, uh, five additional ones by the, you know, current Prime Minister, Prime Minister Trudeau. Um, Germany, the biggest economy in Europe, only 16 ministers. South Africa reduced its own Ramaphosa reduce its own from 36 to 28. Egypt, Egypt, which is not doing too badly, you know, in Africa, 32 full ministers. And of course, India, India, which is four or five times our size in terms of population, and by far a bigger economy, has only 29 uh, cabinet ministers, even though there are 47 other junior ministers, given the size of the country. And therefore, where did we get you know, the, the logic of we need 48 ministers for people to be effective. America, where President Tinubu studied, has only 15. Where did we get our own logic from, Paul? Our constitution has exposed us. It exposed us to the extent that instead of us to be a united nation, it has a, a united country, it has exposed us to the point that he has mandated or stipulated that we must have one minister per state. If we have just five ministers, they can run this country. Look at before the, the 1966 school. How many ministers or ministry do we really have? And was Nigeria better managed then than we are managing it now? The answer is yes. And what was the output? What was the influence? What was the performance? And what is it now? When you mention Nigeria among committee of nation, what, we, what came to mind in the 60s and what is coming to mind now? It's something different entirely. It is not by putting a lot of salt that make the soup too sweet. Putting so much salt can actually damage the whole pot of soup. You can't say because you want to, keep a, you want to cook a cup of rice, you must get a cup of salt. A little is enough. The question should be, are the people competent? Do they have character? But constitution has stated that we must have 36. So whether the people are competent or not is a different kettle of fish. We are not looking at it is in Nigeria that we say that the role of minister is just administrative in nature. And that is why we are getting an administrative answer. When we put people who is just there to oversee and we are not holding them responsible for the performance of what happens in the ministry. How many so-called administrators have we have in the ministry of power today? Until people in power leave power, we may not get power correctly. We may not get electricity correctly. Can we get competent individuals, irrespective of age, irrespective of tribe, irrespective of religion, irrespective of where they come from? But can they get, even irrespective of the nation? It mustn't be Nigeria. Can we get somebody, and, and I by no means mean that there is no Nigeria that can help us solve this big devil or big elephant in the room called electricity. Can we get someone who can work with a team to make power relatively constant in Nigeria? But what we have done, how we appoint minister, is the beginning of all evil. 
unlike what is applicable in some of the countries that you mentioned, including America, Britain, India, unlike what is obtainable. In Nigeria, most of the time, we use ministerial appointment to reward people. Even when we have states, and I mean subnational, that have performed below expectation, abysmally poor, slow performance, we still give them that appointment because we are looking at when next they want to contest, they will have resources to spend so that they will remain in office and the political party will remain in power. And I'm not casting, a, uh, I'm not casting any uh, abuse on any political party. We have had two major political parties like Nigeria, both the PDP and the APC. So I'm not directing this argument to one political party or uh, even political parties that have not yet uh, led the country. I am saying, can we start to make a difference? If we want Nigeria to be a country that people will want to emulate around the world, we must behave differently. We cannot say that because somebody belongs to a party, therefore, whether he or she is competent or not. And I also think National Assembly should help Nigeria by setting out questions that are related. I understand members of National Assembly may not be professional in the field, but can they set up a group of people that we volunteer to work with them for free to first help them audit or question or you know part, i mean interview some of the so-called minister in the near future so when a name is suggested they go and meet the national assembly committee who might work with some volunteers you know professionals to ask and people that are operating in that ministry you know because the the essence of ministry is to work with private sector to deliver results whether it is blue ocean, whether it's the energy, electricity, whether it is oil, whether it is whatever it is. So when we ask, we will know that the person coming has competence and there are expectations that Nigeria is uh, that Nigeria will get, you know, in the coming period. But so long as right. we continue to look for administrative ministers, yeah. I am sorry. Our power may not be stable, mm. unemployment will remain high, inflation will remain high, because when they get there, they will keep wondering what is happening. Uh, all right, Paul, uh, very quickly before we uh, let you go, uh, just a quick one. I know that you've spoken at length about the marine and the blue economy, uh, but I want to bring, bring in quickly, you know, an area that, of course, is always of interest to me, you know, the creative economy and the tourism, uh, and the tourism you know, ministries. You know, of course, that uh, the information ministry used to warehouse those two. But what we have now is that information uh, stands alone on its own uh, with national orientation. Uh, tourism has been carved out. And then art, culture, and creative economy, you know, on the other side. And I'm wondering, you know, for somebody who is, you know, well versed in business, you know, like your good self, uh, you know, because the jury is still out as to why the necessity uh for uh, separating what other people will call is you know siamese twins uh art culture on the one hand and then tourism on the other hand uh, given the fact that if you look at the breakdown of the agencies under those ministries tourism has actually just two agencies so much so that they now have to bring one from arts and culture the national gallery of art which is an art agency you know to add to tourism and i'm saying that if the president was thinking that oh i want tourism to stand alone so that i can deliver with just two agencies would it not have been better if the creative content of it you know is together with the showy you know people side of art culture you know and creative economy which is tourism would it not have been better if we had the two together and then give it the, the sort of necessary push that other countries of the world are giving it what are your thoughts on, on, on creative economy and tourism. Well, I agree. I agree. I agree a hundred. I agree a hundred percent with you. I've also looked at that agency, and um, I, I can tell you that I agree a hundred percent with you. I think we should have had some measure of some sort uh, with those two agencies. But please, there is something really important is, uh, that I must say. You know, one of the ways we can get because when you're in media, it's important to give advice to those that will listen and make so much uh, for the country. One of the things that Nigeria that is developing our nation now is scarcity of effects, both at official, I mean, especially at official window. But what can we do, especially with these two ministry of conversation, art and tourism? If you travel most part of the world today, Nigerian music, Afrobeat, 
is leading people play Afrobeat everywhere, all over the world. Which royalty? Um, what what amount are they really repatriating back to Nigeria? From the Americans to Asia to the Middle East, everywhere, people play Afrobeat. And what in returns? And I'm not saying this money must come to government. No. But even to the artists, to our musicians, how much in revenue? And you see, they cannot do this alone until those, the ministry that government have created, if they, because the work they are doing to me, I think the agencies under me are too, they are too small. But can we come up with something such that everywhere in the world, no matter how small, something will go to those uh, artists so those musicians or the producer whatever name the, wherever way their industry work and when the money is coming to nigeria is coming in hard currency that we have impact in our foreign reserve and you can have self relief the size of that industry even though because we have not optimized it that is why it's looking small is huge and it will take a significant part of what we have in oil and gas it might not be the same thing but if we can develop it properly I think we'll do something. And I can tell you one government that I've done, a country that I've done really well. When you look at technology, Indian government did not pay attention. It were individual efforts in India. Until government saw the impact the citizens were making around the world, the government decided to partner with them. It's not too late for the government in Nigeria. Yeah. We have all of these brilliant individuals, male and female all around. Can we, now that we have an agency for them, if government will not merge, can we include them such that we can have more revenue, we can grow our currency, we can grow our economy, because many of them have remained loyal to this country. In spite of all economic challenges, they've remained Nigerians, they promoted the identity of Nigeria, such that many of them are even more popular, more known than most politicians in Nigeria when you question around the world. All right. Fantastic submission as always. Paul, Paul Elaje, we want to thank you for your time with us on The Morning Show today. Thank you very much indeed. Welcome back guys, you've seen the video for yourself. Let me know what you think on the comment section below. Let's interact together on the comment section what we think about this very video we just watched. Guys, where I really can't explain what is happening in Africa. A lot is going on, especially when it comes to politics. The politicians are indeed playing politics lot of citizens of africa different african countries are not happy with what is going on presently but just let me know what your thoughts are on the comment section i'll see you in my next updates have a warm regards bye bye bye